Hi, I'm Titus, and this is Lee Wen. We're from Dance Insanity, and today we're doing the Jive American Spin. So, we're gonna do it five different ways, so if you're out there social dancing, you don't want things to get, you know, boring. We wanna keep them exciting. So we're gonna give you lots of options to keep it fresh. Fresh and healthy? That's right. <gasps> I'm gonna follow. This is what goes through the follower's brain. They go, one, two, three, and four. I better get around five or six. And you might make it, but you might not. So, better choice, because it is in the technique book this way. You go, one, two, half a turn on the right, and then half a turn as you shall say, <gasps> life is good. Instead of trying to push the follower, concentrate on your hip rotation to help the connection. Hip goes back. I'm gonna take my right hip all the way back, her left hip back. We triple step. Now I'm just gonna take this left hip back, keep my frame, that'll help lead her. So are you saying that in the spin, you're actually trying to send her hip away from you to help her enter spin? I wasn't saying that, but I was thinking it. Oh. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. One, two, three, and four. Five and six. A lot of times when you're competing or you're doing social dancing, we get way too plugged into one idea. We're like, American spin, it has to stay this way and go that way, and then we turn, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, hey, wait a minute. If we just rotate her by one half, approximately, this whole step will really open up and be like way more interesting. I like it. So from here, one, two, open it up, three, a four, five, a six. And if you really want to put it on steroids, throw a sailor shuffle in there, leaders. Thank you. Rock, step, triple step, sailor, shuffle, and then things are even more better. When you're social dancing, you don't always know what the leader's gonna lead, and that's where the fun comes in. How do you follow if you don't know what he's gonna lead? Well, you wanna keep your arm pretty toned, and go with the flow. Feel wherever he takes you, go that way, and keep your feet underneath yourself, Plus, keep the rhythm. Then you're all set. And one, two, three, a four, and five, a six. The assumption is that when I do jive, I have to chasse. That's not actually true. From here, rock, step. I could go triple step and actually just take one step as she does a triple step out. Or she could have done one step. So it's always kind of cool how whenever you're doing jive, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, you can actually kind of do something different five and six with your chasses other than just side to get side. You do need to stay rhythmically accurate, but there's a lot of room for creativity there. When we both spin, one thing that's nice is I can use my right hand in a lot of different ways. From here, I could actually put it on the shoulder and give her a two-handed lead as I spin. Or I could put it somewhere else. One, two, like maybe on her hip, three, a four, and five, and six. So there's a lot of ways you could, you know, change things around. Something that you see a lot when you watch competitive jive is a lot of fast footwork, and it's really cool, and it's awesome, but at the same time, you might say, where are the chasses? Where's that basic jive? Well, a lot of times those basic chasses are replaced with a sailor shuffle, and you can use it a lot, and it makes things a lot more dynamic and fun. This next step is gonna do exactly that. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. One time, there was this guy on a boat, and he had way too much to drink. So what ended up happening was he was sort of falling over, and he was trying to dance, and he was getting his thing, and the, there you go, the sailor shuffle was born. So you remember, when you're trying to do the sailor shuffle, you wanna let go of all that, like, you know, I'm going to point my toe, and I'm going to straighten my knee, and all that technical stuff, and just don't drink any alcohol, but maybe pretend that, so it's, it's not so, like technical, it's loose and sort of overbalancing and kind of slippery, kind of have a little bit more of a loose action with it. So we have a regular, you know, uptight rock step. Well, everything's gotta be perfect. You know, rotate that hip, get that foot correct, straighten that knee, and then we gotta get into our sailor shuffle, which is a little more drunk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And then we're back to being our serious uptight jack dancer again. And follower, you just do the basic footwork. Let him be the drunk one. Because one of us got to be serious around here. Seven, eight. One, two, three, and four. Five and six, seven, eight. As we rock back, one, two. I have to make sure she can see that hand underneath there. And we do our triple step. Then I gotta go over her head, over her head, keep the right hand high, and then over both of our heads simultaneously, putting the hat on as we triple step back. jive, it becomes really easy to think you got to do chasses, you got to do kicks, you got to do sailor shuffles, but the reality is, just like West Coast Swing, all those moves can be reinvented. So while you're dancing, listen to the music and let that be a guide for you sometimes, as opposed to just thinking blindly, I must do a chasse or whatever it is. So even within these five steps that we showed you, there's a lot you can do creatively with your movement and your footwork. I'm Titus and this is Lee Wen. we're from Dance Insanity. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.